to come in here and completely overwhelm the Knicks in the fourth quarter. The Knicks, meanwhile, see their nine-game winning streak come to an end. And a rare home loss. The Knicks have been so tough at home now, 17 and 6. That was the scene Saturday night at the Garden. Let's welcome in right now CP the franchise, creator of Knicks Fan TV. CP, great to see you, brother. Mark, great to see you. Happy Sunday, and I hope all is well with you. Everything's good. Let's talk a little Knicks, your specialty, CP. Uh, last night they lose to the Lakers, ending that nine-game winning streak. Cause for concern or just a little bit of a bump in the road? At 32 and 18, a nine game winning streak, Mark, just a bump in a road. It's the ebbs and flows of an NBA season, which is a marathon and, and not a sprint. And look, the Knicks just went up against a hot Laker team. The Lakers had just beaten the Boston Celtics on Thursday night without LeBron James and Anthony Davis on the road. So they were rolling. And so for the Knicks, look, they've been able to tread water withstanding a big trade and major injuries. They're in fourth. They're in the fourth seed in the East, a game behind the Milwaukee Bucks for a second. So they're in great shape right now it was a tough loss on Saturday night against the Lakers but they should be able to bounce back all right CP they overwhelmed Los Angeles did the Knicks in the fourth as you know is there anything we can learn by the way they defended Jalen Brunson yeah, you need reinforcements because Darvin Ham and the Los Angeles Lakers game plan was to sell out blitz on Jalen Brunson and live with the results. And it worked in their favor. Torian Prince, Austin Reeves, Anthony Davis, they were sensational on the defensive end for the Lakers. Max Christie came up with a signature block. And for the Knicks, listen, when Jalen Brunson gave that ball up, the Lakers had no respect for Josh Hart or Precious Achua or Isaiah Hartenstein to be threats as shot creators. So this was just an example where the Knicks were just down too much firepower and the Lakers were able to capitalize. All right, we've got five games left before the All-Star break. How convenient is the timing given the Knicks, all the Knicks injuries, that there are right now no Julius Randle, no OG Ananobi? Excellent timing. Given the reports that Julius Randle will be reevaluated in two to three weeks, OG Ananobi's elbow injury is starting to become a little bit of a concern. And then you also have Quentin Grimes out with a knee sprain. And so the one-week All-Star break should bode well for the Knicks, and you hope that those guys can come back healthy because right after the break, they'll face a tough matchup against the Orlando Magic, a team who they've lost two games to, a, re a rematch against the Philadelphia 76ers, and then a big game against the number one seed in the East, the Boston Celtics, a team who the Knicks have not beaten this year so this will be a big test after the all-star break hopefully they can get back healthy all right NBA trade deadline is Thursday how does Randall's condition affect what Leon Rose and company do what do you how aggressive do you think the Knicks will be Given the optimism with the Randall injury that he'll be reevaluated in two to three weeks, it seems like the Knicks are, are happy with his progress so far and that he'll avoid surgery. I don't see them being so aggressive at the trade deadline, Mark. In previous trade deadlines, the history of the Knicks is they've been trying to get guys on the margins at their price, whether it's Derrick Rose, Cam Reddish, Josh Hart in each of the last three years. I think the Knicks will try to look to do the same, whether it's a Malcolm Brogdon or an Alec Burks, getting that bench upgrade that will solidify their bench for a playoff run once all their starters come back healthy you know CP last one for you would be this when you look at this team realistically if they add that bench piece come Thursday in the NBA trade deadline and you get Randall back healthy and OG Ananobi is back and healthy what's the ceiling to this Knicks team I think the ceiling is Eastern Conference Finals, Mark. I think this team has all of the elements of a contender. When you look at their defensive capability when OG Ananobi is healthy, you look at the fact that they do have star power in Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle, guys who can go out there and get their own shots. They're able to rebound the ball well, despite the loss of Mitchell Robinson with Isaiah Hartenstein and Josh Hart and Preston Achua. So I believe that they have a lot of the elements that make up a contending team. They just need to get these guys healthy and, and go back on the run in the second half. And see it all changed with the acquisition and the signing of Jalen Brunson. I mean, who is a true franchise changing player? He, he's been unbelievable. You know, Fred Katz, who covered the Knicks for the Athletics, told us in the preseason that the Knicks felt that Jalen Brunson could take another level up from where he was last year. And that's surprising, given how great he was. And But he's showing it. He is showing that he's not only a 1A caliber player, but deserves to be in the MVP conversation. No, he won't win it, but he deserves to have that respect around the league. And I think he's starting to get it, Mark. CP, the franchise creator of Knicks Fan TV. CP, continue what you're doing. You're doing great. All the success, brother and appreciate the time tonight. Mark, thanks again. Have a great weekend. Hope to see you again soon. You got it.